Welcome back to Cooking with Canines at Old Tavern Farm. The dogs are over there sleeping, and I thought today we would make some pie, because pie is super comforting, everybody loves pie. And the difference is we're gonna make sort of a Mediterranean pie using phyllo dough, which is just a very thin um, type of unleavened. Come say hi, come here. Can you say hi? Can you say hi to people? Mm -hmm. Hi, that's his way of saying hi. Okay, watch out for my tripod. Okay, so um, it's a Mediterranean dough that has no leavening and it's very thin. Um, and we're gonna fill it with some spinach filling and um, the recipe I have on my website is called spinach and chicken pie, but I didn't have any chicken. So once again, use what you have and i happen to have tons of venison ground venison um, in the freezer so uh, i basically instead of chicken i used ground venison and i bulked it out a little bit because i didn't have quite enough available that was unthawed thawed and i bulked it out a little bit with cauliflower rice which i just happen to have Okay, still, don't knock my tripod over, please, please, please. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start out with um, melting some butter in a skillet, throwing in some steel. Let's leave that alone, okay? Go lay down, good boy. Okay, so, give myself a spoon, and we put two tablespoons of butter into a skillet right over here, and we're gonna drop a cup of chopped onion in there. Get that going really good. And then we're going to load in our um, meat mixture. And you can put anything in here. You can put in, if you prefer uh, vegetables, put in vegetables. You can use pork. You can use anything you like. Um, Just substitute out what you what you don't want or just follow the recipe. So we're gonna let that cook for a few seconds. Then we're gonna add in our spice mixture, which is oregano, salt and pepper, um, some nutmeg, and some of my homemade, made on the farm, red pepper flakes, which I have had this for like, this one little jug here for like, uh, I don't know, four years or something. You just dry out your peppers in the dehydrating uh, setting of your oven, and then you run them in the grinder, or the Cuisinart, whatever, that thingy over there. Um, and you have your own organic red pepper flakes whenever you want, and let me tell you, they are strong. Um, so that's my spice mixture, and I'm gonna put that into my skillet, like so. Now the recipe says to add things at different stages, but when you're talking about spices, you're talking about salt, pepper, and the seasonings and stuff, it doesn't necessarily really matter when you add them in. It's just going in the same pot, so who cares? Um, so we're gonna let this cook for a second. Now I did actually start one ahead of time, so I have it in the oven. Hopefully it'll be done by the time we finish this little spot. So I have this guy on high. Cook, cook, cook. And you basically just wanna cook till your meat is um, no longer pink and your vegetables are softened because it's gonna go in the oven at 375 for 45 minutes once you load it into your pie pan. So it's really not critical, just get rid of the pink and you're good. So. You're going to cook it and then you're going to cook it again. So if there's anything in there, it'll be dead by the time you eat it. Trust me. So, I'm a professional. <laughs> so um, just for the sake of speed, I'm going to go ahead, turn off my eye, and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to dump my mixture right in a bowl. And actually, um, venison and other game meats are so lean um, that they really don't take a long time to cook. So, um, really lean, lean meats should be, and the smaller, you know, you, your grind, the quicker it's going to cook. If you have a big old hunkin' piece of loin or something, it might take a little longer to cook. But, um, nonetheless, we're going to put 
that in the bowl, okay? So there we are. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add feta. So feta is like a really popular cheese in the Mediterranean region, and it's goat cheese. And so this particular brand that I'm using today is just a brand I got at Hannaford. And um, just crumble goat cheese you can use it on salads. I, I love cheese, as I said. Goat cheese is no exception. <laughs> So even though this is like steaming hot, I'm still gonna add in my cheese. So about a cup of um, crumbled feta right into that bowl. Mix, mix, mix. And then the next thing we're gonna add in is four eggs. And just put your eggs in a bowl and just give them a little scramble so they're just broken up a little bit. Again, we are not fancy cooking. Mediterranean and regional cooking, wherever you are in the world, is gonna be pretty humble, you know. We're just trying to eat and be healthy, feed our families, and try to be happy. So I'm gonna dump that in there. Then I'm gonna go over here to my spinach, and I'm gonna show you a little trick with the spinach. When you're working with spinach, this happens to be frozen, um, chopped, and I'm gonna put it in a bowl that's lined with a piece of cloth, and I'm gonna Lift the cloth out, easier said than done. Okay, and I'm just gonna gather the ends together like this, and I'm gonna twist. So you can see there's a lot of liquid coming out. So when you put things with a lot of liquid in a pie dish, whether it's sweet or savory, we're doing a savory pie today. So that is, that's about a cup of just excess moisture that accumulates when something is frozen. So as you can see, a lot of, and you don't want that in your pie because it's going to make your bottom soggy and nobody wants a soggy bottom, right? Okay, so we're going to put that right into our, whoops, little mixture there, the rag over there, and we're going to mix that in. And sometimes when the going gets tough, the tough use their hands. So here we go. We're just gonna get in there, I'm gonna squish it up. The meat has cooled down significantly. And if you wanna make this ahead and cool your meat in the fridge, put all your components in the fridge, you know, the night before, you go to work the next day, and all your components are ready to assemble, that's good too. So I, when I was working, <laughs> not working right now, obviously, not many people are, but, um, I used to do that a lot, so that's kind of a sort of slow cooker hack for those of us who have to be gone all day. Um, do your stuff, do your assembling and your components the day before and put them in the fridge ready for you when you get home. Have your stuff ready for you, not uh, the other way around. <laughs> so, Okay, so now I went ahead and put the eight layers of phyllo dough in the bottom of the pan um, ahead of time so we can save a little time on some of these videos. Not a lot of eggs, okay. Anyway, so the, the idea behind phyllo dough is that you want to build up layers. Parchment, your best friend, um, good for everything. So the idea is that you want to build up layers, and that's where you get that crunch and that delicious sort of texture, and you're just filling. So you're going to put eight layers of phyllo on the bottom, and in between each layer, you're going to, so that was one layer. You're gonna, I'm almost out of spray, so that's okay, because we're gonna use what we have, right? You're gonna spray a layer of spray, and then you're gonna put another layer down. Now, I'm just gonna hold this up. See, it's very thin, and it's, it's easy to tear. Don't get frustrated, just work with it. If it tears, just throw it in there, because once again, smoke and mirrors, people. Nobody's gonna see that it tore. It's just gonna be yummy, and that's all they're gonna care about, so. The restaurant biz is a lot about smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Let me tell you. We like to serve flavorful, yummy food with lots of layers of different textures and different combinations. And sometimes stuff tears, we just have to, and sometimes we run out of things and we just have to punt. So I went ahead and the traditional way of making phyllo is to brush butter in between each layer. The, the pan spray, using this pan spray, is kind of a modern day hack. Um, it's a little tricky to use the uh, the melted butter and the 
pastry brush takes a little bit of experience and time but you know play around with it we have time right now so why not so just brush it so that was layer four I think two or three or four it doesn't matter I have found that if you use too many layers it gets um, kind of cumbersome and hard to get your mouth around basically so stick with stick with fewer so this is five brush 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 six seven and we're gonna do seven and eight quick so we can get you guys back into your kitchens and get you guys cooking I hope you guys have been trying new things because a lot of these shortages just mean that you know you have the opportunity I try to see opportunity and in, in, in adversity so I try to think of it more as an opportunity not as adverse and not as negative try new things you know if you don't have your brand of whatever then try something else who cares as long as you're happy and healthy and your family and friends are happy and healthy, that's what's important. So, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cut. So, let me show you close up the, there's your pie, okay? And we're going to cut down the center. This, this recipe makes eight portions. And another trick with phyllo is you need to cut it before you bake it. So, once you bake it, it... <laughs> It's a little hard to cut after that. So whenever you see a baklava, which is a layered, a sweet dessert using phyllo dough, it's always cut before it's baked. So, um, and then the method with that is that you pour syrup over it after it's baked. So, but really, you know, once you bake this, it's going to be ready to serve to your family or your friends or company or whatever. And um, I'm going to give it just a little bit more butter on the edge okay so see it's cut there we go and ready to go in the oven so i'm going to put this one in the oven and i'm going to see if maybe yep that might be a little bit i'm going to find my mitts and i'm just going to show you this one that's in here that i made earlier is still got about another half an hour but you can see it's nice and golden brown and delicious and yummy and it's going to be all golden brown and nutritious and delicious so thank you for visiting me again and the dogs go make your own pie experiment with your own phyllo dough make mistakes do it again who cares thank you for coming to see me virtual hug bye bye